Hello, everyone. My name is Isabella, and I'll be your facilitator for this session this evening. Uh, and welcome to the Tennessee Association for Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. We're super excited to have you all here. We have six wonderful institutions here to share a little bit more about what each of them do. Just to explain the format a little bit, we'll have 45 minutes for the session. Each institution will have six minutes to present. Uh, and then we do encourage you to ask your questions throughout the entire session. So don't save questions until the very end. You can ask your questions through the Q&A button you see down at the bottom of your screen. Don't be shy. Our college reps are happy to answer your questions. Your camera and microphone are off and they will remain off throughout the full session. So really that Q&A is your best way to interact with our college representatives this evening. There is another hour of programming after this session wraps up. So feel free to check that out and sign up for more if you haven't already. And this session is being recorded and the recording will be available within the next few days at strivescan.com backslash Tennessee if you need to return to any of this information. So with that, we'll go ahead and kick things off with our first institution, which is Ohio Wesleyan University. Hello everyone, my name is Courtney Dunn and I am an Assistant Director of Admission here at Ohio Wesleyan University. Um, if you're not familiar with Ohio Wesleyan, we're a small liberal arts school located just outside of Columbus, Ohio in a small town called Delaware. Um, and I should also preface as I start my presentation that we call ourselves OWU, um, O-W-U. Um, and so a little brief overview of who we are. We have 1,400 students on campus at any given time. They come from 44 different states. Um, in 28 different countries, 27% of our students identify as international or multicultural students. 95% of our recent grads are either employed or in grad school within six months of graduation. 29% of our students will double major at some time during their time at Ohio Wesleyan. We, have, we offer 24 varsity sports um, and our varsity athletes make up about 37% of our student body on campus. Um, our students also complete about 45,000 hours of community service every year. Um, that is not mandatory by our university. Our students just really love participating in our local community. Our average class size is about 15, and we have a 10 to one student faculty ratio. So a very quick brief overview of just some statistics about Ohio Wesleyan, but I think the most important one is 91% of our recent grads have had some type of OWU connection experience. So this is really how we categorize all of our out of the classroom learning. This is our signature program, and we categorize these things in three different ways. Think big, go global, and get real. Um, so when I say think big, we're really talking about our different research opportunities on campus. Um, and we have two ways to do research. You can do our summer science research program, or you can write your own grant to the university saying what research you want to do. Um, we also go global. So this is how we categorize all of our abroad experiences, like full semester study abroad. Um, we also offer a couple of other programs that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and then get real is how we categorize our internship experiences. I think Eva is a really great example of a student who took full advantage of the OWU connection and how you could do a travel learning course where you study on campus for the full semester and then travel to wherever you've been studying at the end of the semester. So Eva had the chance to do a travel learning to Costa Rica as well as the Galapagos Islands. Um, the university does cover half of the cost. Of that class. Um, and then you can also see that Eva had the chance to do two OWU connection grants or what we call theory to practice grants. She wrote a grant to the university saying what she wanted to do, why she wanted to do it, um, and how it was going to benefit her education. And she was able to go study endangered frogs in Panama, as well as study cast iron practices in Birmingham, Alabama. So really taking advantage of both of her, her major and her minor in fine arts. Um, and the connection grant she was able to do. And then going on to do three different internships um, during her time at Ohio Wesleyan, um, starting at the Stratford Nature Center, which is just right off campus, and then doing a summer internship at the National Aquarium in Baltimore, and then finishing out her Ohio Wesleyan career with an internship at the Columbus Zoo, which then took her to Fairbanks, Alaska, where she works now. So it's a really a combination of all of these different types of experiences that our students are doing. 
that help them stand out um, when they're applying for jobs in grad school and medical school and things like that. Um, that it's not just that our students have come and gotten a degree from Ohio Wesleyan, but it, they've come and gained the experience and built up their resume um, to really help them stand out um, and have fun while they do it. I think Eva definitely probably had some fun traveling to Panama and Costa Rica while she was here. Um, like I said, we are located just outside of Columbus, Ohio, which is the 14th largest city in the United States. Um, and then Delaware is our small town, which is growing rapidly, but I like to say it's a nice hallmark town um, where when you walk into the local restaurants, people are going to get to know you. The barista is going to know your coffee order if you frequent them every single day. So it's a really nice place um, to spend four years. Um, the five most popular majors at Ohio Wesleyan are zoology, business, politics and government, health and human genetics, and psychology. But that being said, we have over 70 different majors for students to choose from, and you have time to explore what you want your major to be. Um, we love when students come in with an exploratory studies major um, or undecided, and we can help you figure out what that is, whether that's through traveling abroad or taking classes in a lot of different areas. Um, we also have a lot going on with residential renewal projects on campus. So our first year residence hall is being renovated with all you can eat dining, um, with a brand new fitness facility. Um, and then our seniors are getting a brand new apartment complex on campus right now as well. And our basketball team and volleyball team got a beautiful renovation to their gym as well. Um, and then lastly, the overall cost of tuition. Um, I know that 62,000 looks really intimidating, but at the same time, 99% um, of our students are receiving some type of need-based or merit-based scholarships to really bring that down. And the average student will pay between sixteen dollars to $18,000 um, for the total cost of attendance. Um, but we do offer generous merit-based scholarships. Um, and so we really do want to bring that down. And the Branch Ricky Opportunity Promise is just one of those. Um, and I'll put my information in the chat to learn more about Ohio Wesleyan. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Courtney, for sharing a little bit more about Ohio Wesleyan. From here, we'll head on over to Miami University. All righty. All righty, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Hannah Stone, and I am the Senior Assistant Director of Regional Enrollment for the Southeastern Region of the US. And I am representing Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. So a little bit about Miami. We are located in the town of Oxford, Ohio, about an hour southwest of the city of Cincinnati. So if you are looking for that small college, college town experience, um, Ohio, as well as Oxford and Miami can definitely check a lot of those boxes. So we call ourselves a big university with the heart of a small school. We have over 120 different majors across five different academic colleges and really something for everyone. We are a liberal arts based school. So that means that no matter your area of major and minor study, you are still getting a very well rounded academic experience. We are still considered to be a mid-size institution with our undergraduate population a little over 17,000 students. Campus is really geared towards the undergraduate student experience. So that means you're not competing with graduate students or um, anything like that in terms of resources as well as research opportunities. Your classes are also taught by professors on campus as well. So, what this means is we are known as a top five institution for undergraduate teaching. So this really gets you connected right away with your professors in all of your classes. They put you on a first name basis. You are not a number in any one of our classes. So really allowing you to really get to know who your professors are and your professors in turn get to know you. So they get to know your learning style, what you're interested in. We are also known as a public Ivy institution. So this was kind of a survey done in the 1980s that designated Miami as well as some other notable public institutions across the US as essentially delivering a, an Ivy-esque Ivy educational experience, there we go, um, for a public school price. So we'll touch a little bit about kind of that value statement in a bit. 
Just a little bit about our accepted student profile. We are test optional for the fall of 2022 application cycle. So just keep that in mind. It is completely up to you if you would like to submit ACT or SAT scores as a part of your application. Um, to give you an idea of the type of student that is generally admitted at Miami, we also list uh, our average GPAs of our middle 50% to give you that range. Another fun fact about Miami is that a majority of our students are coming from across the US as well as the world. So not just the state of Ohio. So kind of building on that community experience, our students are not leaving campus on weekends to go elsewhere. They are very much staying in Oxford, staying on campus. So there's always something happening. You were automatically considered for merit scholarships with your application. So to give you an idea of general ranges, um, depending on your GPA. Our scholarships are listed here. They're automatically renewable for all four years that you would be a student at Miami. So once a scholarship's been awarded, nothing really that you need to do in order to maintain or keep that scholarship. You simply have it for all four years until you graduate. I will mention that if you are at all interested in being considered for a merit scholarship, um, you definitely want to apply by our priority December 1st deadline. Our scholarships tie in to our tuition promise. So this means that we are actually locking in the rate of tuition for all four years of your Miami experience. So once you start classes as a Miami student, we are committing to keeping you here and helping you graduate. And one way is that is by being upfront about tuition, room and board fees, et cetera, and what those expenses are going to look like for all four years upfront. So this really does allow families to budget and plan appropriately for the next four years. And once those four years are up, they certainly do fly by. Um, Miami definitely prepares you for that next step after graduation. So some very uh, notable and competitive uh, rates for students either entering their first careers or heading off into a higher level educational program. So definitely Miami is going to really work with you, um, not only as a part of your academic experience, but also through our other student resources, such as career services to really help you find an area that you really identify with and would like to get some work experience in. That is all I have on a formal level uh, for tonight, but here's my contact information. More than happy to speak with anyone and have a great night. Great, thanks so much, Hannah, for sharing a little bit more about Miami University. Next up, we have DePaul University. Hi, everyone, how are you? Thank you for joining us. My name is Jacqueline Bauer, and I'm the Director for Southeast Recruiting for DePaul University. And I am going to be sharing a little bit about our campus and our academic programs for the next couple of minutes. So DePaul University is a liberal arts university located in Greencastle, Indiana, which is your Typical, beautiful college town. You can see on my first slide here, we've got traditional college buildings and the leaves changing color and Greencastle is just a really great place to go to school for four years. Uh, we have about two, just under 2000 students on campus and we have a school of liberal arts and also a school of music at DePa. So two different tracks that you can study and you can also combine majors from the College of Liberal Arts with the um, music majors too and do joint degrees or a major and minor. Something that we're proud of at DePaul is we have 20% first generation students. And we're proud of that because we are able to successfully help first generation students navigate through the whole college process from early on in the process, like right now when you're thinking about where to apply, all the way through your four years at DePaul, you'll have peer mentors and um, people to really help you be successful and, um, you also have friends that are legacy students on the other side of the spectrum, and that means their parents have attended DePaul and graduated from DePaul. So just shows that you're going to meet people from all different walks of life and all different demographics on campus. We have students from 39 states. Definitely Tennessee is well represented. And 29% of our students come to campus to play D3 sports. We have a lot of spirit on campus. Also, something to note, we have students from 39 different countries um, and study abroad is super popular. A lot of times students will have a roommate or meet someone from a different country and then end up wanting to study in that country too. Some of our majors in our College of Liberal Arts are um, economics, communication, computer science. 
we're a, a small university, so we have small class sizes. So students kind of gravitate to some of the science classes and the lab classes. Biochem and kinesthesiology are very popular for, for students that want to go on to med school. But we also have all your traditional liberal arts majors, and they all overlap one another. So it's very easy to have a double major or a major and a minor. And also in our School of Music, we have more of the performance majors or the music education majors. There's also ways to combine these and there's a way to get two degrees and graduate with a degree from the School of Music and the College of Liberal Arts, but that's a five-year program. So our, um, that's a five-year program and also we have an engineering program that's a five-year program too. At DePa, if you wanna take your academics to the next level, we have an honor scholar program and some fellows programs. And this kind of just boosts up your academic experience. So if you love academics in high school and you're a rock star, this is something you wanna look at through the application process. It's gonna require a separate essay and some of these different programs require an interview, but um, the benefits are huge. You'll have full semester paid internships, You'll be working on a thesis at the end of on your senior year, at the end of your time at DePa. You'll have a lot of opportunities to connect with very successful alumni and have one-on-one -on -one sessions with some of the guest speakers we bring to campus. So these are very prestigious um, tracks at DePa. And if we see something in your application that makes us think that you would be a good match, we'll even let you know when we're reading your first year application. Besides studying really hard and working hard with academics, you're also going to have opportunities to have a great time on our campus or any campus you're looking at. Um, at DePaul, we have 120 different clubs and organizations, everything ranging from Greek life to some of the more serious clubs like the Investment Club or, or the Ambassador Club. You be able to have a good time and meet new friends, but also really gain skills in management and leadership through our clubs. And if you have a club, you're active in, in high school and we don't have it, you would also have the opportunity to bring that to campus. I mentioned we have a lot of D3 athletes, 23 varsity teams and lots of school spirit. But if you're not quite wanting to play at that varsity level, we have club sports too. And just pick up games of golf and Frisbee. We have concerts, art shows and performances and all sorts of different things going on on campus because we have the School of Music. We have an opera and a musical theater event every year. And also wellness is important on campus. Um, not just you see these students doing yoga and we have a great fitness center, but not just the physical wellness, but spiritual wellness and having a good school life balance have been really important, especially in light of COVID. So we have a lot of programs um, just to help you balance yourself, both from the health aspect and also to in just general well-being. These are some of the employers that recruit at DuPont. This is kind of an important slide. I kind of check a snapshot of some different places where you might want to work someday or intern. We have a wide variety, everything from airline industries to pharmaceuticals to teaching. Some another, A couple of other things that we're proud of are 84% four-year graduation rate. And remember, we do have some of those five-year programs. Almost everyone graduates on time. We make sure no one slips through the cracks. We have a 90% med school acceptance rate and a lot of support for students that wanna go on to med school and also law school. So uh, we are on the Common App, but we also have our own application. So if you're using all your Common App slots, if you're applying to a slew of schools, we have our own. Um, we are test optional and we were test optional a year before COVID. So we know how to read your application. And I see that my time is almost up. So I'm gonna to advance to the slide with my contact information, which I will also put in the chat. And I'd love to connect with people and give you more information about DePa. Take care. Wonderful, thank you so much, Jacqueline, for sharing a little bit more about DePa. From here, we'll head on over to the University of Evansville. Hi, everybody. My name is Jennifer Troutman and I am an admission counselor at the University of Evansville. And Oh, hold on just for a moment. My apologies. Let me do this again. There we go. All right. Are you all able to see that now? We are not seeing your screen quite oh, yet. All right. Let me try again. Let's see. Oh, see, I was so quick to move through that earlier, wasn't I? Okay. Hang tight with me just for a second. I am so sorry. Here we go.
There we are. Okay. Okay, there we are. I am so very sorry. Okay, so some fast facts about the University of Evansville. We are located in Evansville, Indiana, which is the southwestern corner of Indiana, right on the Kentucky-Indiana border. We're the third largest city in the state with several major cities only two to three hours away. At the University of Evansville, our total enrollment includes over 2,400 students and about 2,000 of those are part of our undergraduate population. You can see by our low student faculty ratio and average class size that the smaller class sizes help students to better engage with our faculty. Our professors want to get you want to get to know you as a person, not just as the number on a roster. And our incredible faculty teach because it's their passion. All of your teach, all of your classes are going to be led by faculty and not by teaching assistants. And they want to act as a mentor for you to help you successfully reach your goals. We have over 80 fields of study at the University of Evansville, and some of our unique programs include creative writing, archaeology, and ethics and social change. We also have direct entry opportunities such as nursing, athletic training, our doctorate of physical therapy program, our physician's assistant program, and you can find a complete list of majors on our website. And our students are encouraged to study abroad and have at least one internship while at the University of Evansville. And as for athletics, we're one of the smallest division one schools in the country and we have 17 men's and women's athletic programs. And as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, we're known as the purple aces. That's ace um, purple in our, our mascot there on the bottom. So if you'd like to spend some time abroad, um, Harlickson College is a University of Evansville property that is located in Grantham, England. And the picture that you see there, that is where you live. That's where you learn and that's where um, you spend the majority of your time while you're on campus. We have a three day week or three day weekend rather every weekend with four days worth of classes each week and because it's a University of Evansville property, our students, their tuition, their scholarship and their financial aid follows them campus to campus. Um, and all majors can go to Harlickson if you would choose most during their sophomore year, but our nursing students attend during the fall of their senior year because they actually gain clinical experience in a public health care setting while at Harlickson. Do you see challenges as an opportunity to make a difference? If you do, and if you answered yes, then you are what we call a change maker. And the University of Evansville is one of approximately 50 official change maker campuses across the world. That means that our students and our faculty set the bar high for social innovation and make positive changes in the world. You can start making a difference from day one of your time on campus. And our students are making a difference by doing things like promoting alternative energy sources. Um, locally, they've been working with hospitals and clinics to reduce infant mortality. And they even provide micro loans and services to women entrepreneurs, just to name a few opportunities. And we also have a high school change maker challenge where you can pitch your idea um, and could even get full tuition scholarship if you and your team are winners of the change maker challenge high school edition. So let's talk about applying to the University of Evansville. We do offer a free application available on our website. We also accept the common application. And there are two pathways for applying to the University of Evansville, both traditional and test optional. The traditional applicant will submit their, their application, a transcript and test scores. An essay is optional for traditional application, but we encourage you to send that in so that we as counselors have an opportunity to learn a little bit more about you, our applicant. And a test optional applicant will submit their application, a transcript, and in place of their, their test scores, an essay. And to be a, considered for the highest um, scholarship opportunities, we encourage you to apply by November 1st. So the current cost of the University of Evansville are roughly $53,000 for 
fees, tuition, and room and board a year. Now keep in mind that is a sticker price. No one pays 100% of that cost. And all of our students at the time of admission are offered generous scholarships. Those have ranged um, for our students that will be incoming freshmen in the fall of 2021, anywhere from $8,000 to $23,000 in merit aid alone, and then any add-on scholarship opportunities. Um, one, for instance, a FAFSA incentive, we add $1,000 to students scholarships just for applying for FAFSA and including their information and sending it to the University of Evansville. And we always encourage students to apply to outside scholarships, um, those with their community organizations, maybe your parent or guardian employers. And also there are other scholarship opportunities besides merit available from the University of Evansville. And finally, you can see the average financial aid and scholarship package to the University of Evansville is just under $30,000. So be sure to apply, apply early and send us your FAFSA so that we can send you a financial package as quickly as possible. Let's talk a bit about visiting the University of Evansville. There are several opportunities, both um, in person and virtually. Uh, let, and actually tomorrow is going to be our first in-person group um, event. So we're really happy to open that back up again. Social media, definitely join us on social media, UE class of 2025. Also, we've recently taken to TikTok as well. And last but not least, here is my contact information. I encourage you to reach out to me. I am happy to FaceTime with you, talk with you via Zoom, email, text, however is easiest for you and those that are supporting you. So have a great night and thank you for joining us. Thanks, Jennifer. Great to learn a little bit more about the University of Evansville. From here, we'll head on over to Earlham College. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming tonight. Let me share my screen. There you go. Okay, everybody. Well, um, welcome to their own college portion of this. So um, we are located in Richmond, Indiana, um, which is right on the border of Indiana, Ohio. Um, so you get the best of both states, I say. <laughs> um, we're a small liberal arts school. We're roughly around um, a, like 1,100 students currently. Um, but you get that one great one-on-one -on -one attention with your professors, get to know your fellow classmates, all that good stuff. Um, here have all of our majors and minors listed out for you. We also do have six graduate programs as well. Um, so, you know, we range around a little bit of everything, social science, lab science, humanities, fine arts, and we do have an integrated pathway. Um, so that gives you a little bit of a deep dive into some specific areas like equine management, um, archaeology, anything like that. Um, some of our more popular majors are like biology, pre-health, um, or global management, which is like our business program. Um, those seem to be the most popular ones. Um, but we do have some unique ones that our students really enjoy, like environmental science, environmental sustainability. Um, Japanese is a really popular one where we have students go to Japan um, for a full year as well. Um, so just giving your uh, options open and seeing what, you know, Earlham has to offer for you. Here we go. So on average, our class sizes can range between 13 students, which is a nine to one student to faculty ratio. Um, but those would get into your core major classes. I would say our larger lecture halls can get up towards to 60 students, which is still comparatively small. Um, so you're still getting that really great one-on-one -on -one attention from your professors, to peer to peer um, interactions, anything like that, that you might be wanting out of a smaller liberal arts kind of setting. Um, and we uh, actually all of our professors go by their first names. We were founded by Quakers in 1847. So it's just kind of the part of the tradition with the school. Um, so they don't believe in the theory of hierarchy. So they have the, um, you know, professors go by their first names. It allows students to be more open and have those deep conversations during lectures because um, they don't have that hierarchical figure above them. Oops. There we go. We have this really awesome program called our Earl Advantage, which is a funded internship or research opportunity for every single one of our students. So you have the ability to get your find your own individual internship with help from our career coaches. Um, it could be anywhere abroad, anywhere outside of your own home state. Um, it pays for your flights, stays, foods, any kind of programming that you might be needing some funding for. Um, we also do put on some trips 
So you can use the Earlham Advantage funding to go on those trips with um, Earlham faculty members and students. So it's just a really great opportunity to give you those kind of career based experiences um, without having to worry about cost or anything like that, because um, a lot of internships and research opportunities are unpaid. So it really just cuts out that middleman. So you can go hold a bear at the Alaska Zoo or something like that. Okay. Um, we do have 60 student-led organizations on campus, and it's really easy to start your own club. Um, most of our clubs are student-started and student-run. So if we don't have a club that you're really passionate about in high school, you can totally bring that to your Earlham experience. Create your own tradition. You know, the alums like it. They come back years later and see their clubs are still established. It's kind of a fun experience. Um, they range from different topics from like service clubs, cultural clubs, an interest club, rec sports, anything like that. But we do have 17 men's and women's Division III NCAA teams. Um, our coaches do a good job of really having our athletes focus on their academics and really be a part of that kind of educational background. Um, so you're getting the opportunity to really dive into your academics, but still continue that really great athletic team building exercise that you probably grew up doing at the same time. Um, we do have eight residence halls on campus. So they range from, you know, your traditional style, share a room with the roommate, bathroom down the hall kind of thing. Um, we do have singles, we have quads. Um, as you can see, we do have themed friendship houses. So they're not themed like stories of fraternities. It's based off clubs and majors. Um, so you have the ability to live in a whole house with people who are in your same major group or different club activity, which is really fun. And we do have apartment style living as well. Um, so a really broad range of different areas that our students can live in and, you know, have activities and stuff like that too. So we are on the Common App and we do have our own Earlham application as well. You know, we ask for your extracurricular activities, personal essays, high school transcripts, and Earlham is actually a test optional school as well. Um, so you have the opportunity to really um, make that decision for yourself. Um, Earlham looks at your application holistically. Um, so grades and testing isn't the end all be all of anybody's application. So we just gave our students the opportunity to decide if they want to submit their test scores or not, um, which is really cool. We also asked for one letter of recommendation from a teacher and a guidance counselor. And then obviously we any kind of TOEFL SAT for international students, we have a really great international um, recruiter who can help you out with that too. We do offer merit scholarships and like you, you've heard them mention before, they look at your um, GPA and your test scores, but if you don't submit your G, or don't submit your test scores then it just looks at your GPA. And we get, do give out plenty of need-based aid as well. 95% of our students have some kind of um, great financial aid package, some kind of need-based aid. Um, so you're getting that kind of assistance when it comes to cost. Um, and then for any international students out there, we do have a really great um, financials um, Kind of circumstances for our students as well. Once again, if you want to talk to our internationals um, recruiter and get pick their brain on anything, that'd be great too. Okay, thank you for coming to this session and listening to all these great schools and Earlham. And if you um, want to contact me, please check out our website. You can check out under my name or Elijah. Um, he would be your specific mission counselor for Tennessee. So thank you for coming. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit more about Earl. Uh, from here, we'll head on over to our final institution of the session, which is Ohio University. Hey guys, I'm Angie Lyons. I am with Ohio University. I am your regional rep based in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to share a quick video with you and come back to tell you how you can make Ohio home of the Bobcats your forever home. I'm going to do this real quick. Share the sound because that's important. Here we go, I'll be back. At Ohio University, we've spent our last 216 years perfecting your four. We looked at a bunch of different schools and the last one was OU and I came here and I just realized that like it's home, it just felt right to me and that's a weird feeling because I didn't feel it anywhere else. I'm from a small town so I get what it means to have a community and when I came here I felt that community again. There's something about this place that just makes you feel happy.
knowing that you're having an impact and able to contribute to whatever science field you're working in is really important to know as a student. It was definitely cool to see true science in the making. It's a real community that you get, not just in your residential green, but also in your residence hall. Together with our regional campuses, centers, and Ohio Online, we are One Ohio. When I first came here, I didn't have a lot of confidence. The faculty teach you that change is important. You meet all these people who want to enact the change and want to be a part of a family. The best part about it is gaining confidence in being you and not being someone else. This is home. This is a place for me to grow, for me to be a new person. Ohio's generous and renewable scholarships represent our commitment to investing in your success for life. Ohio University doesn't just deliver a degree. It becomes part of who you are and will be forever. Sorry for that interruption. Um, when applying, we require a minimum of 21 credit hours that include your standard core courses of English, math, science, social studies, and two consecutive years of the same foreign language. Um, so of course, if you are doing any dual enrollment or college credit plus, um, AP, we will take your scores of three or higher, IB, or anything like that. If you have a C or better in your college courses, we will take them. We most definitely want to give you credit for all the hard work you've done as a high school student. So please do not worry about that. Just submit that along with your transcript. When you're speaking of transcripts, we have a very simple process. We're on the Common App as well as we have an Ohio online application. Um, we do have a $50 application fee, but I am happy to give you a fee waiver if you reach out to me. And we also send out various codes um, to students in our database. Um, so rarely do students pay for the application on the Common App or our online services. Seeing a transcript, as well as optional um, things like an essay, we love to hear about who you are, what challenges you've overcome, some different things in your interests that you like. We want to know who you are um, when you're applying to us to make sure it's a good fit. We love letters of recommendations. Um, and also, you can send your test scores if you like. But however, we are going to continue being test optional. That pathway of being test optional will not prevent you from getting merit-based scholarships. So if you were like me and you just didn't like taking tests, you do not have to send your test scores to Ohio University, but you would still be considered for scholarships, um, as well as any honors and scholars program. We do a holistic review. So we care about you inside the classroom, but also outside the classroom. So if you're considering Ohio University, you think this might be a good fit, we would love to hear from you. We are doing in-person visits. So check out our website and, and schedule a time. We're only six hours from Nashville. Um, so most definitely come out in about seven hours from Knoxville. So we'd love to have you. Again, I'm Angie Lyons. I'm your regional rep for Ohio University. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Angie. Uh, so from here, we do have a little bit of time. I think we'll invite all of our college representatives to turn their video back on and we will have everyone answer uh, a nice group question before we wrap our session up this evening.
So I think what would be fun is if we have each institution share a little bit about your favorite tradition or event held on your campus. And why don't we just go in the same order that you all presented? So we'll start with Ohio Wesleyan. So one of my favorite traditions on campus is at the beginning of the academic year and at the end of the academic year, we have an event called Day on the J. Um, and all of the students get off of class and we come and have a giant cookout and all of the food is free and they bring in big blow up obstacle courses and rock climbing walls and um, bands and things like that. And we kind of just have a giant festival for all of our students to kick off the academic year and then to close out the academic year as well. Um, so it's a nice time to just celebrate being a community and coming together and then celebrating all of the great work that they've done all semester. So uh, one of my favorite campus traditions also ties into one of my favorite student organizations at Miami called Pause for a Cause, in which uh, students can actually raise uh, service dogs uh, for uh, families and individuals with um, various needs. So um, for some of the puppies who are in training, uh, Valentine's Day is pretty big on campus. Our campus motto is love and honor. So of course that comes out a lot in February. And Pause for a Cause hosts a photo booth fundraiser uh, for uh, every Valentine's Day. And for it, uh, students uh, get to take pictures with some of the puppies. So the puppies get to work on their socialization and you get cute pictures with dogs. So um, it's a really cool campus tra uh, tradition. And uh, by the time I got there, uh, when, the last time I was on campus, um, they everyone was exhausted and tired and it was oh so cute. So that is one of my favorite Miami traditions. I don't know how I'm gonna follow puppies, but <laughs> we have a really cool beloved tradition at DePaul called the Monon Bell game. And in my slideshow, you saw a photo of it. It's our big football game at the end of the season. And we play Wabash University, which is an all men's university and our arch rival. And we play for the honor of having that bell on our campus. And we didn't play this year because of COVID and we won two years ago. So we currently still have the bell and um, we're hoping to keep it, <laughs> but it's a really fun game. Everyone gets bundled up because it, it's chilly out and um, watches the game and cheers on the team. Okay, so for the University of Evansville, one of my favorite traditions, it is for students who are recruited to the university all the way through students who are currently on the university campus. It's called Road Trip. We actually um, limit that for incoming students to those who are admitted to the university. We send tour buses out. I think we have six different routes that we send tour buses out, pick students up on a Friday afternoon, bring them to campus. They stay in our residence halls uh, with current students. They um, go to our uh, basketball games and theater events on campus, stay in the residence halls with current students. And then on Sunday afternoon, we send them home. And for a lot of students, Students, it's their final decision. Do they want to be a student on U of E? It's a really great immersive experience. And um, you know, once the students are then on campus, then they look forward to hosting road trippers in the future. And it's many, many years been going on. Of course, for this current year, we could not host it because of COVID, but our virtual road trip starts on Saturday. So we're looking forward to that this year. Well, these all sound so fun. <laughs> um, I would say that we have this thing, it's called Earlum Day, so it's the best name, obviously. <laughs> um, and it's very similar. We have um, to Wesley, we do have like a giant cookout. Um, we have a lot of alums come back to campus and they get to meet a lot of the current students. Um, we have blow ups and it's on the heart of campus. We call it the heart, but it's like the quad. Um, so the center of campus, we have, you know, hammocks, frisbee golf going on, and it's just, you know, a fun time to relax during the fall. <laughs> that does sound fun. Um, we have two things. The first one in the spring is called the Boogie on the Bricks. It is a music festival as well as a film festival. You will get a lot of free t-shirts, and in college you love free t-shirts. Um, so that is something that we do in the spring when the weather is beautiful in Ohio and the cherry blossoms are just amazing. Um, so it happens. And then in the fall around Halloween, we have the Mardi Gras in the Midwest. And that's a big celebration around Halloween. A lot of fun, a lot of partying. And it's a great time just to relax after final exams. Um, so it's a, a good time at Ohio. Great. Yeah. Thank you each for sharing a little bit more about uh, your institution's favorite event or tradition. Um, we had dogs and, and bells and puppies and 
Mardi Gras in Ohio. Uh, I mean, what more can you ask for? So I appreciate you all taking the extra moment to, to tell us a little bit about that. I definitely learned quite a bit about each of your institutions as well. Uh, but I think that is all that we will have time for in this session this evening. So I do want to take a moment to say a big thank you to all of our college representatives for sharing a little bit more about their institutions, but also to thank you for joining us as well. Uh, whenever this session wraps up, you will see a very quick four question survey that will appear on your screen. If you don't mind taking the extra moment to fill that out, it's very helpful for us to get feedback as we continue to plan events like these moving forward. Uh, reminder that there is an additional hour of programming after this, so if you haven't already signed up for more sessions, feel free to check those out. And that the session was recorded, so if you need to return to any of this information, it will be available at strivescan.com backslash Tennessee within the next few days. Uh, but thank you once again for joining. Thank you once again to all of our college representatives, and I hope that you have a wonderful evening.